So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shaurya, an instructor in Lahore Institute for Immunology. And the topic is about, it's, it's a computational method called defi chip to identify the statistically significant differential loops from high chip data. So the previous speaker introduced about the differential tags and structural uh, part, and this is kind of even finer resolution, the loops, and especially from the high chip data itself. So as you know, this 3D genome organization is now being captured by the chromatin conformation capture assays, and two of the most widely used assays are high C and high chip. And these are also called proximity ligation based assays because these work on this cross linking followed by restriction digestion, then ligate, ligating the DNAs and subsequently preparing the libraries and sequencing. Now, high C works is kind of an all to all contact model. So resulting contacts between every possible interacting fragments, depending on the sequencing depth, of course. So it kind of requires billions of sequencing reads if one can permit. And uh, it's kind of reporting every possible context. Whereas high chip is a restricted subset working towards a particular protein or histone modification of interest. So it's a subset and regulatory contact map and high resolution regulatory contact map with, with much lower sequencing requirement. In fact, we have experimented with around 40 million high chip reads uh, or 60 million. That's enough compared to a billions of high series. So this chromatin loops, as you can see from this example, the sonic hedgehog gene in mouse, it's regulated by a limb enhancer more than a megabase array. And it was demonstrated in this GT set of paper. So if you delete the enhancer, you can see the abnormal limb development. And if you mutate the enhancer, you can see this abnormal finger development. So that shows the regulatory enhancers, those are highly important in uh, uh, kind of regulating the transcription of a promoter. So our lab focuses on identifying this kind of structurally or regulatory important loops using these high C and high chip assays. And these are some of the papers published from our lab in recent times. Now, what's the differential loop? Very simply, it's like one chromatin loop having differential chromatin contact count between two conditions. For example, between disease versus healthy condition, between two different cell types, or even between a control condition versus one enzyme treated condition. Like here, you can see one control condition and one is this auxin treated CTCF depleted condition and each are having two replicates. So this is from a collateral cancer data, which is published recently. And you can see this, this one, this red colored one, this is the differential loop, example loop, which was validated in that paper. So there are lots of high C specific differential loop colors, as you can see from the list, but none of them are actually applicable directly to the high chip settings. First of all, because of this, restricted subset sparse contact matrix that's generated by high chip so so high c specific methods cannot be directly applied and secondly of course there are protocol specific high, high chip protocol specific bias then we have to also understand whether these differential loops they are due to 3d genomic reorganization or due to the underlying 1d changes like chip seek distribution changes and there are many differential loop colors which are biased towards capturing the shorter range loops but they can miss the longer range ones, like for example, one megabase loop. But I have shown in the previous slide that one megabase loops or even beyond that, they're also immensely important in capturing the regulatory or structural components. There are lots of new high chip data sets are coming up nowadays. The first one is from our lab in the last year uh, regarding the immune cells. And there are many more disease specific high chip data sets. Those are coming. That's why this differential high chip loop colors will be extremely useful in the coming days. And existing methods so far, they all use these DEC or HR methods, which are all RNA seq count based methods, and they are using negative binomial distribution to model the observed count matrices. For DEC, this mean is estimated as a product of the library size factors with the normalized count values, and the normalized count is modeled by a generalized linear model equation using the design matrix elements, which are basically variables indicating the condition or additional covariates, including replicate specific informations. And finally, gene-wise dispersions are estimated to compute the variability of observed counts among different conditions. Whereas in HR, similar formulation, only thing is that these dispersion estimates are modeled by an iterative approach using the percentile or rank of gene expression. Okay. And subsequently, an exact p-value is computed using the observed counts and the uh, count distribution. So that's why it's called the exact test model. Now, HR also has this generalized linear model that's implemented, but none of the differential high chip loop colors so far use that technique. 
only one high specific method deep high c back in 2015 used a part of it actually so similar formulation that i have shown for de seq only thing is that azar has two different types of dispersion in addition to the genes gene specific dispersion it also supports a common or trended dispersion so basically the same dispersion fit fitted for multiple genes or at least a group of genes with similar gene expression pattern and once we fit that dispersion we are uh, putting in a statistical testing framework like likelihood ratio test or quasi likelihood f test to account for the even higher variability of counts between different conditions now you can see that the chromatin contact map it's even higher variable compared to a gene expression setting because you have this protocol specific differences sequencing depth restriction fragment positions and so on i mean there are lots of different conditions that's why we believe that glm model and particularly this kind of advanced testing statistical testing that will be even more applicable in the chromatin contact map settings again there is a distance decay bias that's another problem in chromatin contact data that, that this contact probability exponentially decays when we have increasing genomic distance and so far dc or azar they cannot model this distance decay bias so what we have is that two solutions in proposed in existing literature one is the independent hypothesis weighting basically weighting the p values using an independent covariate like for example in dc we use the base mean as covariate and we propose that we can also apply ihw on top of azar by using the log cpm as covariate the second solution is distance stratification so, so instead of putting every possible chromatin contact as a background for dc or azar we can stratify based on certain beans for example contacts up to 0 to 10 kb distance from 10 to 20 kb distance 20 to 30 kb distance so sequentially we put only those contacts as background and thereby we can nullify the this uh, distance decay bias now this high c specific method you can see this kubo et al this method or even a recently proposed high c dc class which is an high chip specific method that can that applied actually distance stratification so we also implemented distance stratification using a 10 kb bin overall this is the defi chip framework it encapsulates every possible models d seq or azar using different models using either all contacts as background or even distance stratified background using conventional bh corrected fdr benjamin hochberg corrected or even the ihw corrected fdr for all of these settings we also support using chip seq data to get this 1d invariant solely 3d based differential loops but i'll not describe here i will just focus on this looping part and different parameters and we use three data sets to validate and to benchmark different uh, parameters first one is a colloquial cancer data published recently on rna polymerase to high chip so the conditions are control condition and auxin treated ctc of depleted condition to ch check the change of interactions involving super enhancers the second one is a hackard data hackard cell line data for skin disorders so for skin disorder t cell mediates an interferon gamma stimulation so the loops differential due to this unstimulated versus the stimulated condition on acetylation high chip data the third one is melanoma cancer cell data and here we are trying to check the role of stromal antigen 2 stack 2 which is a core part of cohesin complex and we check whether the deletion of stack 2 whether that reorganizes or changes the loops and the authors found that actually stack 2 deletion results loops assigned to the paralog stack 1 and we'll investigate that differential loops okay so the first we applied fit high chip which is our previously published method to call the high chip significant loops on individual samples so first of all for the first data we can see that when auxin is treated or ctcf is depleted you can see the number of fit high chip loops that's quite low compared to the wild type condition whereas for other two data sets we can see that the number of loop counts is not drastically different so using multiple data sets that's helpful in order to assess both sensitivity and specificity of any any given method so first question is that should we use the conventional bh corrected fdr or ihw corrected fdr now when we go for the ihw correction we are finding lot of exclusive loops compared to the conventional bh corrected fdr and this is true for all the data sets so when we check the distance distribution of this Uh, settings we found that first of all the red colored one this is the union of fit high chip significant loops for all the samples and this fdr with ihw correction 
see the solid lines so this is re recovering higher fraction of loops in the longer genomic distance whereas fdr in the bh collection is kind of towards shorter side shorter genomic distance and this is whole um, true for other data sets as well and particularly if you see the d seek this blue light blue color irrespective of the models you, it, it is reporting kind of shorter range loops compared to hr so we think that hr with specifically ISW corrected FDR that's reporting the longer range loops. Now we have also checked the enrichment of these differential loops and we use the APA aggregate peak analysis score, which is basically comparing for a given loop, the surroundings, all the loops surrounding say plus minus 50 KB and specifically actually 15 to 30 KB downstream from the five prime region and 15 to 30 KB upstream from the three prime region. So those loops, in those regions, they are compared against a given loop. So if an if a loop is enriched, the contact count is enriched with respect to the background set of loops, then we'll say we'll have a higher APS score. And for each condition, we are reporting four APS scores. First of all, you are categorizing whether the loops are upregulated in say oxygen condition versus control condition, and what's the background control or oxygen. So our hypothesis is that when the foregrounds and backgrounds are matching, like oxygen upregulated loops and oxygen background. So they will have high APS score compared to say oxygen upregulated loop, but in control background. Then it will be a truly differential loop with high enrichment in the respective condition. Okay, so you can see these bold headings. So these two APS scores will be higher compared to the other two APS scores. So that's our kind of hypothesis. And if we do not meet that kind of expectation, I am marking it as a gray background, saying that we are not meeting that expectation. So you can see that exact test model is not meeting that expected APA pattern. But if we go for this GLM models, we are getting expected APA enrichment. And particularly see the QLF test model. This last one, this I have highlighted as a blue background, saying that this is having the best APA enrichment. And this is corresponding to the ISW corrected FDR exclusive loops detected by that particular setting compared to conventional BH corrected FDR. So you can see this ISW corrected FDR exclusive loops, those are also highly important. And if you go for the local specific example, for example, the collateral cancer data, this IER 5L gene and the super enhancer. So this red colored loop, this, that was validated in the literature. So uh, this is an in, important differential loop between the control and oxygen treated condition. And we are finding that IHW corrected FDR reports this loop, but not the conventional BH corrected FDR. Now, the second question is which model, DEC or HR, or even within HR, which particular model? Again, going back to the local specific example, seeing that GLM with quasi likelihood F test, ISW FDR correction, that only reported the differential. Okay, no other DC or even HR exact test model reported that loop. Going to the second data set, Hakka data set. So, this is a CTSS gene, very important gene for skin disorders. So, the three differential loops they highlighted paper, this HR GLM LRT model that reported the differential loops, whereas other methods like DC. These are exact test or even this high CDC plus, which is a high chip specific method. And actually it uses DEC as the background. It reported a subset of differential loops. If we go for the APS course, we are finding that GLM model is reporting the best AP enrichment. And even if we go for the exclusive loops detected by the GLM settings, we are getting good AP enrichment score. This is for the collateral cancer data. So overall, if we are using of, um, all contact background, we, we recommend to use IHW corrected FDR and with GLM models. Now the third question is that, should we use the distance stratification or we can use the all contact background? So for distance stratification, we are finding a lot of exclusive loops in the HR settings that, that we found for all three data sets. And we found that surprisingly, this distance stratification, the exclusive loops detected by it are actually towards shorter side shorter genomic distance, whereas the exclusive loops in the all contact background, it's capturing kind of longer distance range. And which was a bit surprising to us because stratification is expected to retrieve the longer range ones. But of course, those are tested for high C data. This is high chip data. So different protocol, of course, the background set of loops, number of loops, those are different between high C and high chip protocols. Okay, so this is true for all three data sets. And for the local specific example, we didn't find any this loop from the stratification models, whereas 
for the other example hakka data we found similar exam similar results between the stratification and the non stratification version for the aps course we found the stratification perform performed slightly better here in the first colorectal cancer data whereas for the second uh, melanoma cancer data we found kind of very comparable performance which cannot choose between those two so overall this is our objective is that if we are using uh, stratification we should check the distance distribution and if you have replicate information then we recommend to use the glm models either using the all contact background or using the distance stratified version and we need more high chip data and more locus specific examples specifically to compare between these two so overall we are reporting all of these settings in order to compare and this is the summary that defi chip a comprehensive framework encapsulating every possible models and supports high c data as well in, in in addition to high chip data with that i want to thank my supervisor dr farhat ai and the nih grant he received to, to carry out the research work daniela who is a co author of the manuscript that we are writing is she is uh, just starting her phd in ucsd dr katya from harvard medical school she is using defi chip in one of our projects and she has also helped us in validating this software thankful to my lab members as well and with that i want to thank you all and i invite any question from you thank you And for a couple of questions. Thank you. I was curious: is there a way to assess these differential loops that you are getting? Um, first of all, like uh, using the different approaches, how much overlap is there across different uh, things? But uh, more importantly, yeah. So I have shown a Venn diagram for different data sets. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the question is, uh, is there a way to say, like, you know, linking expression, or how do we know the link the loops are actually meaningful? Do you see that differential, for example, the differential loops? Genes yes. Like yes. We are, we are testing on that, but I didn't show it here. But these GLM models, we have found that this upregulated or downregulated loops, they are also highly overlapping with corresponding up or downregulated genes. I didn't show that for all three data sets, but we are getting much better result compared to the seek or even exact test models that we have got. And now we are trying to finalize that which of these up or down regulated genes, for example, certain examples, for example, and then we can kind of comment in a complete fashion. Thanks. Very nice, and I like the systematic nature of the comparison. But Thank you. Thing, just from the beginning, I'm not sure about is there's some confusion in the, in the Field about terminology for loops versus compacts, right? We thought that like Perez in Dunedin, a loop is like what's shown here. It's a region that has a high you know, contact and surrounded by low contacts. Some people use loop to just refer to the pixels and visual contacts. Yes. So in your in this setup, which one are you approaching? So individual pixels. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to worry about finding loop like things. So no. I think it might be worthwhile to, um, you, because I think there's a lot of papers out there that talk about loops and mean something entirely different. So uh, I just caution you to be mm -hmm. sure you're clear because I, I was confused for a while. Yes, yeah, there are loops, domains, tags, many tags, there are many. So for loops, it's like one individual pairs of fragments. Those are interacting, those are having chromatin contact between them. So basically, non zero pair and rate counts, as simple as that. That's a loop. Okay, thank you.